Hi everyone, it's Chad Taylor, pretty far away, is, uh, away from central Minnesota. I'm in Quincy, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. And I am just at a beautiful church, uh, which we're going to talk more about here in a few minutes. But I want to introduce you to Rebecca. Uh, now you just arrived at this gorgeous church. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not been that long, maybe about two years now. That's you? right. And coming to this church, um, there had to be for you uh, just an awe feeling, I guess would be the way to describe mm -hmm. it, to know the history mm -hmm. of this church yeah. and how relevant it is still today in 2016. Yeah, yeah. And I was first attracted to this congregation because of the relevance that it is a church right in the center of the city, uh, next to an even bigger city. Right. And what is the role of religious community in the 21st century? How do people find meaning, make meaning, find community, uh, draw from the patchwork of their earlier religious experiences to have a spiritual life that's meaningful to them now. And then I found out that it's the Church of the Presidents and <laughs> learned <laughs> some <laughs> about the history of this congregation. And it's really shown for me that uh, the history of, of liberal religious traditions and our, our country run in parallel. So this congregation was founded in 1639. Um, it was a Puritan congregation at that time and it allowed the town of Braintree to be formed the next year. That's how the early New Englanders had things set up. And so there's a democratic impulse that runs through the history of the congregation, uh, something that was pretty unique about the Puritans in their time, aside from their very conservative attire, was that they had um, the way they gathered together is each congregation wrote a covenant of the beliefs that they had, and they signed that themselves. And so that democratic impulse, I think, eventually gets us to the Declaration of the Independence and the writing of the Constitution. Um, it's an impulse, because in the 1630s, that, that circle of covenant really only, was only open to like white landowning men of a certain theological persuasion. Mm -hmm. But over time, that circle grows. And this conviction that like we can do it ourselves, the idea of who is the us grows, and, and then more and more people can participate in that democratic community of how do we come together ethically, how do we make meaning together. Uh, and so now... Which we still struggle with which we in 2016. Totally still who Isn't is that the something? We? Right. Who is the we? And so we have this impulse in the history of our country of these great values we have never fully embodied. Langston Hughes talks about, um, let America be America again, the America that never was. And here we have in this congregation. And the Americas that the Adams wanted it to be. Yes, you know? and, and you know, we, we often tell our visitors that of the first 10 American presidents, they were the only two who did not themselves own slaves. And it was under their watch that we wrote a constitution with a compromise that allowed for slavery. So history is always a complicated story. And I think uh, part of the, the power and relevance of, of being in a historic congregation is that history gets to be a mirror for the present. And we can truly appreciate um, the great work that they did and the things that were truly revolutionary and radical, and, and also see their failures and that they were only able to go so far. And so I talk a lot about being guided by the highest ideals that we shared. And it's not about what would they do now, because that's like such a such a hypothetical question. Right. You know, like Because who knows? Who knows? And Abigail Adams, um, who who grew up one town over. And, and married John Adams, and they were true partners in their own time. And people ask me, like, well, was Abigail Adams a feminist? It's like, that concept did not exist. So no, because it wasn't an option. Right. <laughs> but she was a partner within her, her marriage in a way that was radical and that was incredibly helpful for this country becoming what it is. Like, she is truly our founding mother and, like, the force of intellect and character that she brought to her this relationship with, with her husband and their circle of friends to be like, we're not just going to tear down the old, but make it new. And, and so she was a, a big voice in that, but wasn't in the we of who got to vote. 
You know, she helped create the country and could not vote. So our role over history, and I think our role now, is to keep expanding the we. And part of the role of religion in that, I think, is, is to, to help us, to help us be compassionate with ourselves and one another so that we don't have to, like, judge ourselves or our ancestors for what we haven't done. We can look at it honestly and, and, and ask that we grow and that we learn and that we act accountably in our present time, but we don't have to do it like with shame and ju judgment because that, that keeps you trapped, all that guilt. Sure. So um, when I think about what's relevant about being at the Church of the Presidents in 2016, it's about the ways that we can support each other to really challenge, to really grow, so that the, the circle of the spirit of life and love that dwells within between and beyond us all, that, that our actions can really show that to be true. How relevant in your sermons then are the presidents? Because as you're doing your sermons, Mm -hmm. They're right below your feet, basically. Yeah. I mean, they're here. Yeah, they are, and you have... And their spouses. Um, so the clock, uh, Abigail Adams donated that clock to the building before this, the Hancock Meeting House, um, which was located right next to here, and it's so named because the patriot, John Hancock, his father was the minister of this congregation. <laughs> so there's a lot the, of pressure for you. There's a lot of pressure, right? a lot I mean, of pressure, but there's not, because at the same time, it's the Unitarian Universalist Church in the city of Quincy, and that would be here regardless. Yeah, I'm wishing John and Abigail were in the, in the cemetery across the street. And then when this when the church was built, a John Quincy Adams who worked with the architect, Alexander Penrose, had this crypt done, had his parents brought over. And then after John Quincy Adams, when Lisa Catherine died, they also were buried across the street. And their son, Charles Francis Adams, had the crypt expanded, and his parents brought over. It's the only church you two present in Weisbury. 